you, folks. That meant for you because you've earned it. Yes, you saw your knob and turned it to the channel that presents our aggregation. Soon you'll see Sir Frederick Gass here. Billy Reed, George Rock will pass here. Each to musically express depreciation. While Morgan, Fred, and Dick disarm you, Helen Graco's songs will charm you. All in all, the night looks bright and New Year's Eve. -y. Gosh, we're glad that we could catch you. So for now, here's looking at you. Won't you join Spike Jones and share a spot of TV? <laughs> music lovers. You know, quite often during our personal appearance tours, many of you... Sonny, get your mother a chair, will you please? Attaboy. As I was saying, quite often during our personal appearance tours, many of you have been kind enough to come backstage and invite us into your homes. Well, we hope the invitation still holds good, because here we are, thanks to television. Isn't it wonderful? All you have to do is sit back and relax. I wish I could relax. You know, I've just got to make good on television because of my son, Spike Jr. You know, he's only a baby, but he loves to sit and watch television, especially those shoot 'em up westerns. I was gone so long on the last tour that when I came home, he thought Hopalong Cassidy was his father. No, that's the truth. He really did. Say, would you like to see a picture of Little Spike? Huh, would you? I just happen to have about 40 of them on me. Now, wait a minute. Ah, here it is. There he is. Isn't he handsome? Isn't he terrific? Everybody says he looks just like me. <laughs> well... Some people think he looks like his mother. <laughs> but I think he looks just like me. <laughs> well, anyway, I'm out to prove something to little Spike. I want him to think that his father's brave, too. Uh, would you I'm going to... <clears throat> I'm looking for Spike Jones. Oh, I'm Spike Jones. <laughs> Well, wait a minute. I was just talking to our friends out there. What do you want? Well, uh, I'm a bird imitator. Well, thank you very much for thinking of us. Leave your full name with Ralph Wonders, will you please, out in the office? Thank well, you. Well, I'm a bird imitator, and I'd like to become one of the city slickers. Well, I'm sorry, but we have a bird imitator, Dr. Horatio Q. Birdbath. Yeah, All right? Yeah, I know him, but uh, I got a new wrinkle. Uh, I don't just... Uh, uh, now, look, I, look, when it comes to imitating birds, there is nothing new. Nothing new. Thank you. 
Well, thanks anyway. Nobody wants to hire me. Thank you, Admiral Byrd. As I was saying, I'm out to prove something to little Spike. I want him to think that his father's brave, too. And I've chosen tonight for my vehicle, Wild Bill Hiccup, a musical saga of the wide open spaces, or saggy musical. But before I do, I'd like to present a man who is going to give you a word about the people that make our visits possible. Couldn't be clumsier if you had two heads. What did he say? <laughs> Let's try it again, okay? Here we go. One, two. Okay? 
One, two. I gotta get water, but I don't know how. I gotta get water, but I don't know how. How? 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 For a cowboy went out the land and don't know A glass of calico spray Brave the Navajo Loche ha ho Hey, hula We are the one of our Hosa Baza Hula, we are gonna walk Got a little jigsaw puzzle With seven million pieces A 40 ounce of people Who want to break their leases Lots of telephones And wrecked by spike jaws Loche ha ho So set 'em up, Joe. 
I got a little story you ought to know. We're drinking, my friend, to the end of a green pepper stone. Just make it one for my baby, one more. Step on the line again. I'll have your skin. Now, give me a drink. Okay. Four more milks in the usual way. Well, let me see. Where do I begin? Oh, here's four glasses to pour the milk in. Now, don't forget the eggs. I had them in a sack. Oh, here they are. I'll put them on the rack. Dead-Eye Dick! Sounds like a law. So you're the notorious Dead-Eye Dick. I hear it shooting your pretty well, if you don't believe it, don't stand and stare. Just throw a half a dollar up in the air. Now, do you believe that I never missed? Are those your drinks? Yeah. Just watch this. And I shot 40 men, I held up the stage and I robbed the mail car. Well, one of these days you're going to go too far. Listen, Wild Bill, you can't bully me. I've got a reputation in history. You see that star just below my knee? Yep. Gunfight in 1863. And you see my shoulder and all those nicks? Yep. Gunfight in 1876. And you see this bullet in my upper plate? Yep. Gunfight in 1888. Ah. Nothing. See the scar on me? Yeah. Appendicitis, 1943. Dead, I am warning you to leave this town. I'm sick of your talk. I'm going to 
want to shoot you down. Give up, did I? I'd rather die. If you insist. Ah, <laughs> you missed. You've been wonderful. But before I say goodbye, I've got to tell you a story. I've got to tell you a story about a little boy that was good to his mummy. Now, he wasn't a mummy's boy because of that. He was just a good little boy. But one day, he wanted to show his mummy how fast he could run down to the store and back. But he was in such a hurry, he didn't notice the lights change. That is, until the car hit him. Then they really changed. He saw red lights, blue lights, green lights, orange lights, all the way to the hospital. He was lucky he wasn't killed. When his mummy saw him, she brushed a tear from her eye, smiled, thanked God that he was still alive, and said, well, son, I guess for the next couple of weeks, there are going to be two mummies in our family. The moral of the story is, boys and girls, and I mean big boys and girls, too, always look out for the other fella, because you never can tell when the other fella may be you. Goodbye. Don't forget to write.